Uh, indeed, I'm going to talk to you about logic and analyzing events in complex Shiny apps with the new package uh, uh, Shiny Event Logger. And this presentation here is supported by my agent company, 7N, and also, and also this work on this package is also, has been recently supported by uh, Roche. Okay, so let's start with the question, uh, why to log? So we have multiple benefits coming from logging events in Shiny application. We can uh, do some logging during the development phase, and we can also log events when our app is already in production. So logging during the development shows which events are firing or not, what uh, are the sequences of events, uh, logging shows uh, why events fired and uh, within what context. So generally speaking, it helps us with the bugging and the whole development process. On the other hand, logging in production shows how uh, users uh, use our app, what are the common usage patterns and so on. So it helps with uh, evaluation of our apps and possibly further optimization in the future. So we know that we want to log events, but what do we need to log those events? So uh, in my opinion, uh, it would be perfect to have some logging tool dedicated to logging events in complex Shiny apps. There are many solutions for logging uh, inside our ecosystem, but uh, in my opinion, I would really uh, like to have some tool which is dedicated to, to, to exactly to, to, to Shiny apps uh, and the needs of uh, Shiny developers. We would like to also have uh, the ability to see the most uh, recent events in real time and to quickly and easy, easily uh, access our event logs. Moreover, we would like to store those events, event logs permanently, possibly in some uh, remote uh, database. And it would be very good to have also ready tools, ready to analyze uh, our uh, events, our event logs. That's why I uh, have been started working on the Shiny Event Logger package. This package is still in the experimental phase. Uh, so it can change a lot in the nearest future, but it already proved to be very useful, uh, very useful with some uh, untrivial uh, shiny applications. So what type of events can we log with this package? We can start uh, with logging some generic event. And uh, by generic event, I mean an event that is described by some data and those data are a uh, unique identifier of the event, the event type, the event name, this is an obligatory part uh, of the event data, event status, and optionally, event body. And within the event body, we can uh, encapsulate some additional information about the event and event context. So let's try to be a little more specific, and let's say we would like to log uh, some value. So uh, our app is already running and there is some R expression that we would like to evaluate and log this uh, evaluated value. And you can see in this example here that uh, when I'm changing the input number, I also uh, log uh, the event uh, each time. And there, uh, these are, there are two important things uh, going on there. So we are uh, using our unevaluated expression as the event name. This is done by default. We can change that uh, if you want, if you would like to. But uh, we are also logging the evaluated expression. So this is the number. Uh, and this is done within the event body. We can also log some output of uh, our functions. So if our function is printing out something to the console, we can capture it and uh, log the whole output into the event body. But let's say we, can, uh, we would like to do something even more interesting and we would like to put some unit tests inside our Shiny application. 
and we would like to log the result, the result of uh, the results of this unit test. So, uh, in this example, we are using test that package to do some unit testing, and we are logging if our tests uh, are successful. In this case, the uh, status of the event is success, or it is erroneous. The status then is uh, an error. In case of an error, we are also uh, logging the message of uh, coming from the unit test, in, again inside in the event body. Uh, one important thing uh, here is that uh, when we are logging an error, this error doesn't break our application, doesn't stop it. We are just logging that something is not right and we can analyze it further. On the other hand, we can log some traditional diagnostic messages like message, warning, error, but in case of error, uh, this error can break our app, but it will also be logged before that. But we can also use uh, our events uh, to timing uh, some actions or to time our events. So in this case, uh, in this example, I'm uh, uh, logging that I have started my event one, then uh, my app is doing something resource intensive, and then I'm logging that my event one has finished. And you can see in the event uh, body that we have a list of parameters. I, I will talk about parameters uh, in a moment, but here we have only one parameter which tells us how many seconds the event uh, needed to uh, finish, to be completed. So uh, we can also use that to uh, log and time uh, events in parallel R processes. And uh, I exactly did that in one uh, complex shiny app that I built recently. And, and my app uh, is at its startup, it's pulling uh, data in multiple parallel R processes in the background. And uh, I was also be able to time each process, how long it takes to, to be completed, to be uh, finished. But at the beginning, I also said that we can log the context of the events. So by the context, I mean some additional information. What is going on inside the app while we are logging this particular event? So this context can be captured by parameters, arbitrary set of parameters of different scope. So we can have parameters that are uh, common for, for all events coming from the same uh, Shiny app. Uh, we, can set, we can have uh, parameters that are specific to uh, Shiny user session, or we, have, we can have uh, para, uh, parameters specific to some uh, observers or some specific events. And in this example, uh, when uh, I'm changing my input number, uh, there I'm also logging three parameters. And parameter app doesn't change because all those uh, events coming from the same Shiny app. Parameter uh, unique, ident uh, unique ID uh, changes when I'm refreshing the user session. And parameter number is changing all the time when I'm interacting with my uh, Shiny app. So we know that we, have, uh, we could uh, log several types of events, but the next question is uh, where we can log those events to. So let me answer to this question uh, with the help of this uh, demo app. And this is very simple. Uh, a shiny app that is plotting uh, a histogram, but we can also change uh, what data set we would like to use, uh, what variable uh, from this data set we would like to select, and we also uh, can change the number of bins for our uh, histogram. So obviously we can output our events, our event log to our console, and this is very useful when you are developing some stuff, you would like to see what is going on in real time while we, are, while we are doing it. But we can also output those 
uh, event logs redirected to the JavaScript console in our browser. And this is useful when we have our app already in some target server environment. Uh, it could be shinyapps.io or Earth Connect uh, or uh, anything else. And we would like to see <coughs> how our uh, app uh, behaves in that target environment. So we can see uh, what is going on uh, right there uh, on the server. Of course, we can store our uh, event uh, logs in a text file, but a more interesting way to do that is to store those event logs in some external database. And I'm experimenting uh, a lot right now with MongoDB. And inside MongoDB collection, you can store all those event data with uh, an arbitrary set of parameters for each event with some additional information like timestamp or user session ID and so on. So, okay, we have our event data, but uh, what, how, how we can analyze them? Uh, how to analyze uh, the event data like that? So we can use, if we are treating those data like traditional event uh, data, we can use some process mining techniques, which are already implemented, for example, in the Bupar package. And with that package, we can create some process maps, for example. Process maps that show us what are the patterns and paths in end users' behaviors. We can do some time analysis so, and analyze how much time is needed uh, for different uh, sequence of events to happen. We can analyze throughput time, idle time, processing time, in this case, per data set in our application. We can do some sequence analysis. So we can analyze what events, which events happening after which events. What are the repetitions of the events? Or the, what are the self loops of the events? And so on. We can also do some resource analysis. So for example, we can uh, find out uh, which observer in our application is, is used more often the most often one. So, uh, yes, in this case, uh, this is an example from our Shiny app as well. And last but not least, we can analyze some top users' action. And in case of our example, we can see what, uh, which data sets are most often selected, which var variables are most often used by our users, or what number of bins uh, works uh, well for, for our users. So what's next? Uh, what, what is the future of the, the package and the uh, roadmap? So I would love to add uh, to the package uh, uh, possibility for catching and uh, logging some unexpected, uh, unexpected errors in our, uh, in our uh, apps. Uh, I'm still looking for the best way to do that. So if you have any ideas, any suggestions, uh, please find me. Uh, I would love to chat about it. Uh, I'm quite sure that I would like to also add JSON as a default serialization format for storing events, uh, also in a text files. Uh, I'm already working on improving integration with MongoDB. Uh, and I would like to uh, also add the ability to show or hide selected part of event data. By that, I mean that uh, sometimes we don't want to have our uh, console um, to be polluted by all the event data we have and we just want uh, would like to have some more concise uh, summary uh, of what's going on in the application and i would like to also add uh, uh, some easy method for dynam dynamically dynamically selecting which events should be logged where and when and by that i mean that for example uh, Maybe we already have some shiny application already in production. We are logging some very carefully thought uh, standardized events into uh, external database. But then we are also working on some new features. 
And we would like to also see uh, and log some events, but not to the database, but just, for example, to the console. So we would like to easily manage all those different streams of events. And that is something I would like to also uh, add in the nearest future to the package. Yeah, and I think that's it. Thank you very much for the time, for your attention. Here you have some additional information and additional links to the package documentation, some contact information if you would like to uh, chat about the package and about your needs and about su suggestions, please find me. I would love to do that with you. Thank you very much.